we find ourselves in the desert. Rumors of nuclear war. Isolation from loved ones. Natural disaster after natural disaster. Violence that causes people to flee their homes. And we ask ourselves, can God set a table in this wilderness? Welcome to the Well, St. Timothy's online Sunday service on this, the third Sunday in Lent. It is hard to believe, but it was two years ago this Sunday in Lent that we began this online service. As we began this long season in the life of our country, where we've been in a, it seems like some cases, a, an interminable wilderness. A place where we are longing as the psalmist longs today to to have our thirst satisfied by God. Of course the image of the well, the name for this service is that it is the place where the Samaritan woman came to get her thirst satisfied. As we worship today I pray that your thirst for God will will be fed today that God will somehow give you what you need to continue your journey as a disciple. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Oh, 
A reading from Exodus chapter 3. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight, and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing of milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 43 As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, a thirst for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? My tears have been my food day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where now is your God? I pour out my soul when I think on these things, how I went with the multitude and led them into the house of God, with the voice of praise and thanksgiving among those who keep holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to the Holy One, who is the help of my countenance and my God. My soul is heavy within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from the peak of Miser among the heights of Hermon. One deep calls to another in the noise of your cataracts. All your rapids and floods have gone over me. You grant me your loving kindness in the daytime. In the night season, your song is with me a prayer to the God of my life. I will say to the God of my strength, why have you forgotten me? And why do I go so heavily while the enemy oppresses me? While my bones are being broken, my enemies mock me to my face. All day long they mock me and say to me, where now is your God? Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to the Holy One who is the help of my countenance and my God. The Gospel appointed for today is from the 13th chapter of Luke. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you. 
but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them. Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I've come looking for fruit on this fig tree and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be waste in the soil? He replied, sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. The Spirit didn't take the Hebrew slaves directly to the promised land, did it? it took them to the wilderness. And for 40 years, the Spirit didn't take Jesus directly to Galilee after his baptism, did it? It took him to the wilderness for 40 days, which of course means a long time. In this Lent, the Spirit doesn't take us directly to Easter. It takes us to this 40 days in the wilderness Because the wilderness is the place where we discover what we need the most. And of course, what that is, is God. It's what the psalmist today knows as the deer longs for the water brook. So longs my soul for you, O God. Here is a person who knows how much their soul needs God. My soul is a thirst for God, a thirst for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? The problem for this person is not that they don't know what they need. The problem is that something has happened to get in the way of that need. They are being attacked. Maybe they are living in exile. They want to come once again to the temple to see God in that wondrous space. People are mocking this person, you know, where's your God now? Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? Why are you so disquieted within me? Put your trust in God. Here is someone in the midst of this troubling time, this time of heaviness of soul, anxiety. They know what they need and what they need is God. But you know, for a lot of modern men and women, for me, perhaps for you, we may not know that what we need the most is God. Simone Weil, the French mystic of the 20th century, she said this, the danger for modern men and women is not lest the soul should doubt whether there is any bread or to use the mission of the psalm, water. But lest by a lie it should persuade itself that it is not hungry, that it is not thirsty. It can only persuade itself of this by lying. Because of course, the reality is, is that we have this deep longing, this deep thirst for God. The problem of course, is that we have pretended, we think, that we found ways to satisfy that longing. We think, for example, that success will satisfy that longing that we have.
You know, success is something that's ingrained in us from early days, isn't it? I know in my own childhood, um, whether it was sports or academics, you know, the goal was to be successful. The goal was to be the best. Um, and there's nothing wrong with wanting to be successful, but what you discover is that the thrill of success lasts about five minutes. You know, you win one tennis match and then you discover, oh my God, there's another. You win one soccer game and you're thrilled and then what do you do after the thrill is gone? It does not endure. You do well academically and yeah, and then there's just another term that comes along. You know, we've been led to believe that we can satisfy our hunger through water and bread that simply will not satisfy. The psalmist, on the other hand, knows that as the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O oh God. They know that God is what will quench their thirst. Well, here in this wilderness of Lent, a moment of, of real grace for us would be the recognition that we are trying to feed this hunger, quench this thirst with stuff that just doesn't do it. That is a moment of real grace. You know, sometimes people discover this when life has just fallen apart and it's just so obvious life is not working and then they, they finally are open to the reality they need something beyond themselves, namely God. But I think for many of us, it's not that dramatic. It's simply that we, you know, we wake up one day and we say, boy, this just isn't doing it. You know, what's wrong? And it may, it may be because, gosh, you know, I'm, I'm a success. Um, you know, I am popular. Um, I have money. I have a, some security. Isn't that what's supposed to be the answer to my deepest need? No. And so what then happens to that person? Maybe they were raised in church, maybe they weren't, but this longing inside leads them to come into a space like this one day. And in this space, they discover what the psalmist discovers. You know, I pour out my soul when I think on these things, how I went with the multitude and led them into the house of God with the voice of praise and thanksgiving. For this person of faith, you know, worshiping God, being in a space where people are trying to be open to God is the answer. You know, so I don't know where you are today. You know, maybe you are someone who realizes that the things that you want to satisfy your thirst or just not doing it. Or maybe the wills really have come off the cart. This is a moment of grace for you. It's the paradox of this journey. It's only when everything doesn't work that we then discover this hunger for something more. And guess what? We then are open to what God can give us. So what you might do today is to simply bring that longing to God. You know, God, I, wanna, I want to be <laughs> like this person of faith in Psalm 42. My soul longs for you, O oh God. I'm a thirst for you. I'm a thirst for the living God. What about bringing that prayer to God? And then being open to what God wants to give you. You know, when the woman at the well came to see Jesus, he said to her, if you'd ask, I'd give you water that would be in you a spring gushing up to everlasting life. God wants to be the source 
of our life, God wants to meet our deepest need. The journey begins by recognizing that we've been relying on things that truly do not satisfy. And then asking God to give us what we need. And then of course, we have to wait. None of this is magic. None of this means that one prayer to God gets us what we need. But we've taken the first step. It's the step in the wilderness. The recognition that we have this deep, profound hunger inside that only God can satisfy. Dear God, there are some seasons in life, O oh God, when losses and griefs and disappointments seem to build an impenetrable wall between us and the joy you have created your children to experience. When so much pain surrounds us and other people, we wonder where you are in the midst of it all. As the psalmist said, as the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. We don't know why everyone's life has its seasons of loss, and we can't answer why sometimes this loss seems unending. We do know one thing, though. We need to hope in you our God, trusting that pain is never the final answer for our life. Remind us that during our darkest nights, your light is with us, consoling and empowering us. When others are experiencing their losses, grant us the courage to see the full extent of their pain and then to respond to their needs in the best way we can. 
We ask for your blessings for all suffering from the effects of natural disasters and violence, especially your children in Ukraine. In the face of such unspeakable anguish, help us to experience the pain of our sisters and brothers as Jesus would, and to reach out our hands to console and heal them. Empower the leaders to find rapid and lasting solutions to these situations. Bless all those assisting others to weather crises with hope and dignity. We pray for those continuing to suffer from the pandemic and other illnesses. Grant justice and mercy to those everywhere suffering from poverty, loneliness, deprivations, and systematic injustice. May we serve as your hands and feet in this difficult world. Send your healing spirit to those on our prayer list, especially Ali Alfieri, Bonnie Stevens, David Dreisbach Sr., Debbie Corotis, Mike Voris, Grace Owens, Patty Carr, Cindy Brandyberry, Jane Habig, Angela Berner, Tom Keller, Alida Schatz, Selah Maisie Hart, Norma Blatt, Rob Alfieri, Nancy Kess, Jaroslav, Lisa Bernheisel, Wendy Jones, Brenda Freerking, Andrew Fenner, those grieving the loss of loved ones and for your own concerns. We pray for the dearly departed, especially those we now name before you. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As always, it's a privilege to spend this time with you as we continue our journey through Lent. I pray that your longing for God will quench your thirst, meet your deepest need. And if you want to be part of other programs here at St. Timothy's that are inviting people to discover God, be fed by God, simply go to our website and you'll see what we have to offer. There are literally each day some sort of prayer service, a Bible study, some way to, to get that water that satisfies our deepest need. I do want you to know that on Monday evenings, um, starting last Monday, um, we've had a 20 minute prayer vigil at 6.30 for Ukraine. We'd have it in our parking lot near Beachmont Avenue. And a simple service, 20 minutes, a song, some prayers, some time to bring to, to God the deep suffering of the people of that country. As we conclude our worship today, let us end as we always do by bringing to God our longing for God to make this world what God wants it to be, God's kingdom. Let us do that in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this Lent and forevermore. Amen. Life is short, and we never have too much time for gladdening the hearts of those who are traveling the dark journey with us. Oh, be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.